This tutorial will help you to complete the assignments for homework number two on Delta Math. The first one is determining the domain and range from a graph. So there are a lot of symbols down here that you can use. You can use inequality notation or you can use interval notation. I'll do a couple of examples of each. So the first is to make sure that you are determining the right um, value, range or domain. So read carefully because a range is the distance up and down the y-axis. So if you're using inequality notation, then you would need to use the letter y. So the lowest this graph goes is this curve right here, which goes as low as negative 1. So I'm going to type a negative 1 here. And because it is a solid line, I can use the less than or equal to sign. You're always going to use a less than sign here, or a less than or equal to, because the value is going to be between. So the lowest is negative 1. And then we need a variable. We're going to use y because we're doing range. Now we need to see how high the graph goes. So as I scan my graph, the highest point would be here, which is a value of 6. And because the line is solid, we use a less than or equal to. So this is the correct answer written in inequality notation. If I were to use interval notation from negative 1 to 6, I would choose the two brackets with my comma in between because both of them have equal to signs and those are brackets. Again, range is up or down along the y-axis. This question is asking for a domain. Domain is the spread from left to right. So for us, it really will be these circle points here. The farthest left it goes is negative 7. It's always a less than sign. Because this circle is open, it's going to not have an equal to. It's just going to be less than. But this time the letter would be x because we're talking about domain. Now the farthest it goes to the right is an 8. Again, it has to be a less than sign or a less than or equal to. Because it's an open circle, it will be less than. You don't have to use inequality notation. You could use interval notation as well in which case you would have two parentheses here, two parentheses. All right, sometimes, let's see if any of these have arrows in them. Nope. So these will all have the ability to be written without an infinity sign. All right, the second is reading graphs and determining if they're increasing or decreasing. So these are all going to be linear. And these are pieces of linear functions. That's why it's called piecewise linear. And there's a lot of boxes down here you need to fill in. So we start from the left, and we look at segment number one, which happens to be going downhill, so that is decreasing. The question is, when does it start and when does it stop? So it starts at negative 7, and it stops at negative 2. So I type that in here. Now I move on to segment 2, which is going uphill from left to right, so that's increasing. The interval is when does it start, negative 2, and when does it stop, positive 2. So fill that in here for the interval. The last segment, segment 3, is also increasing, and it starts at positive 2, and it ends, I'm looking at my x-axis, it ends at 7. So from x, it goes from 2 to 7. Submit your answer, and that's it. Now let's try making some graphs of piecewise functions ourselves. So watch carefully because there's a lot of decisions that you need to make in order to graph these functions using this delta math graphing tool. First you need to decide what type of graph you have. Is it a square root? Is it a quadratic? Is it an absolute value? Or is it linear? So my first graph here is a power of 1, so it's linear. And now I need to look at my mx, or my slope. It's negative, so I need a downward-facing line. Now what I need to do is look at my y-intercept and shift my graph up or down so I can get it in the right position. Because a y-intercept of negative 5, so I'm going to have to shift this down. Once I'm done getting it in the correct location, then I can address this limitation over here, which is 
just the piece of the function that I want graphed. I only want the graph when x is less than negative 5. So now I'm going to click Done and move these arrows here to change the interval of which I can view my piece. So I want it to be less than negative 5. So I don't want to move these negatives. I want to move this one down like this. Now it says less than, not less than or equal to. So I need to click this dot and make it open. Now I'm done. Now I'm going to move on to graph number 2, which has a power of 2. So that's a quadratic. So I'm going to choose this parabola here. And now it's asking me to um, move this around, move this quadratic around based on the information that I'm given. So for x squared minus 2, the only thing I know is the y-intercept. And this is the vertex. So I kind of need to think about what will my vertex be. So I have a couple of choices. My choices are to write it in vertex form or to type it into my graphing calculator. So if you're thinking, how do I write this in vertex form? I don't even have a b. That would be some good thinking. Because vertex form is when you take half of b and square it. But b is 0. So half of b, 0, squared is 0. So if I plus and minus 0 here, whoops, it does nothing. So technically, this would be my vertex form. x plus 0 squared minus 2. So my vertex is 0, negative 2. Or I could have typed it into my graphing calculator by pressing the y equals button and take a look at my graph and I see the same thing. So 0, negative 2. Now that I've done that, I want to specify the piece of which I want graphed. I only want the graph to start at negative 2 and end at positive 2. Start at negative 2 end at positive 2, so I squeeze it in here, and now I have to choose my circles. This one has an equal to sign, so it stays solid, but this one doesn't, so I need to click it to make it open. Once you're finished, well, don't click that, <laughs> you can submit your answer. Let's try another one. The first one is x, which is a linear function, and it's positive. It has no b value, so it goes through the origin. And the piece I want graphed is negative 8 to negative 5. So I'm going to smoosh this in to negative 8. And I'm going to push this one way in to negative 5. Both of these have equal two signs, so my endpoints stay solid. Now my next one over here is a quadratic. So I'm going to choose a parabola. And this is in vertex form. The vertex is negative 2, 0. Right, remember the vertex is the opposite of this, so negative 2 and 0. So negative 2, 0 is here. Now I need to focus on the piece, which is anything greater than negative 5. So that means from negative 5 to infinity. And the negative sign, negative 5, the sign here does not have an equal to, so I need to click that and make that an open circle. Alright, the next activity, alright, we're going to use our graphing calculator to create this box and whisker plot here. But I need to enter all of this data into my statistics menu. I'm going to turn my calculator on, and I'm going to press the stat button. The first thing you need to do is edit your data. So when we do that, we choose number one. And we're going to type in all of these numbers right here. Now, mine are, data already has some lists, so I need to press delete a bunch of times to get rid of all that data. And now I can enter these numbers. So the first one is 5, 6, 8, 9, 9, 10, 10, 10, 10, 12, 12, 13, 15, 15, and 17. Now, your data doesn't have to be in order to go into your calculator, but it does have to be in order if you want to 
do any of this work by hand. So now let me double check my data. I'm going to go back up the top of my list. Here we go. Five, six, eight, double nines, quadruple tens, one, two, three, four, double twelves, a 13, two 15s, and a 17. Okay, that's right. Now what I need to do is calculate my one variable stat. So I press stat, move over to the right to calculate, and choose number one, one variable stat. Press enter three times. And then don't forget, the five number summary is kind of down here at the bottom of the list. The five number summary is five, nine, 10, 13, 17. So five, Oops. Five, nine, ten, thirteen, seventeen. 13, 17. Now the last part is to slide these pieces, your min, your max, your Q1, Q2, or the median, and Q3. So the minimum is 5, so I slide this whisker all the way to 5. The Q1, or the first quartile, is 9, so that's the edge of the box. I'm going to move that to 9. My median is 10. My upper quartile, right, my upper quartile is 13. i move that Q3 down one. And then my max is 17. Now, as you can see, half of the data is inside this box. But the median shows that most of that data is in this section here, right? It's just it's listed equally. Half of all the data is from here to there, and the other half of the data is from here to here. So why don't we go ahead and submit this? And that's how you're going to make your box plots. All right, the last section is linear regression. Now, we can use our graphing calculator, but for this section, I'm going to use the delta math graphing calculator because it's going to type all this data for me. A mathematics teacher wanted to see the correlation between test scores and homework. The homework grade X and the test grade Y are given in the accompanying table. Write the linear regression equation that represents this set of data, rounding all coefficients to the nearest tenth. Using this equation, find the projected test grade to the nearest integer for a student with a homework grade of 66. All right, so first thing we need to do is put all of this data into our calculator. And then we can calculate the linear regression. So I'm going to copy the values, open the statistics calculator, and click this button in the middle, paste. Puts it all there right for me. Now I need to go down to this drop down menu and move over to calculate. My second menu is going to be linear regression. Now you should always turn your diagnostics on in case you need a correlation coefficient. This problem didn't ask for it, but always good to have it on. All right, let's round to nearest tenth. So 1.6 is A, and negative 56.7 is B. So 1.6 is A, negative 56.7 is B. So we'll type that down here. Um, y equals 1.6x minus 56.7, right? And I said, yep, okay. So I can predict a test grade if given a homework grade. So let's see what it says here. Find the projected test grade to the nearest integer for a student with a homework grade of 66. So that means I take this equation and I put a 66 in here for x. So I'm going to type that on my actual calculator. So 1.6 times, what was the um, test grade? Test grade of 66, okay. 1.6 times 66 minus 56.7. So this to round up to a 49. Put a 49 here. So you can expect to get a 49 on the test if you have a homework grade of 66. Let's see what happens. All right. A 
let's try one more. All right. The number of newly reported crime cases in, ooh, this is up my alley. The number of newly reported crime cases in a county in New York State is shown in the accompanying table, where X represents the number of years since 2003 and Y represents the number of new cases. Write the linear regression equation that represents the set of data rounding all coefficients in the year's tenth. Using this equation, estimate the calendar year in which the number of new cases would reach 1189. All right, copy the values, open the calculator, paste the values, drop down menu to calc, drop down menu to linreg, diagnostic on, and calculate. All right, y equals 31.8, so we'll start there. I can't remember much. <laughs> y equals 31.8x, and then the b value is 957.8, plus 957.8, so let me just double check, 957.8, yes, okay, so I've got my regression equation, but the next thing says, using this equation, estimate the calendar year in which the number of new cases would be 1189, so, 1189 is the cases, and the year would be X. So I don't know what X is, and I need to isolate it. So I'm going to subtract 957.8 from both sides. Subtract 957.8 from both sides. Get my calculator out. I'm just going to use my handheld calculator. 1189. Minus 957.8, I got 231.2 equals 31.8x. So divide that number by 31.8, and I got x equals 7.27. So I'm going to say about seven years. It's going to take seven years. But the question is, what calendar year? So the calendar year is 7 after 2003. So 2003 plus 7 would be 2010. So in 2010, that's when there would be 1,118 cases. Awesome. All right. Good luck.